What is it like to live in Canada, you ask? Well, this is it. <laughs> following the ketogenic diet. I started my weight off at 240 pounds and I am now, well, a little up from my goal, but I got down to 133. I gained a little bit over Christmas, which I'm trying to lose in the month of February. I will link my last video here to show my weight and measurements and what my plans are going into February. Um, so you can see where I'm at right now. But on my YouTube channel, I share meal ideas, I do what I eat in a day, I do vlog style videos, and kind of everything and anything in between. So hello for everybody that's coming over from Erica's channel. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that you clicked on my video and hopefully you stick around and hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you join this channel. I share a lot of keto ideas, low carb ideas. I share my experiences, what I've learned along the way of losing 107 pounds and now being in maintenance and kind of trying to find that balance once you do get to your goal weight. So please make sure you subscribe and make sure you leave me a comment down in the comment section on if Erica sent you. I'm so happy that you're here, you guys. First of all, I wanna thank Erica from Time to Shrink to asking me to collab in this video. I was absolutely beside myself. I had tears. She's been supportive literally from when I've started my YouTube channel. I absolutely love her channel. She shares great recipes, absolutely great meal preps, and she has a cookbook that is out as well. Oh, hey, my name is Erica, Time to Shrink here on YouTube. I, on my channel, do all things keto, all things weight loss. I did have vertical sleeve gastrectomy November 23rd, 2018. I have lost over 100 pounds, and I do grocery hauls, I do meal preps for my family, I do what I eat every Wednesday, and then some other things scattered throughout. I would love to have you join our channel and become part of my YouTube channel. I will channel. have her YouTube channel in the description. Like I said, I I am doing this collaboration with her in a what's for dinner video today. So I hope you guys enjoy it and make sure if you haven't already, go down and subscribe to Erica's YouTube channel. So in this video, we decided to do a what's for dinner collab. I will share with you, I think it's about five meals that I did and um, two of those actually are recipes from Eric's cookbook. She was kind enough to gift me that cookbook and to make a couple recipes out of it. I absolutely love this cookbook, you guys. I'm telling you, every recipe in there is easy. It'll be stuff that you have on hand, and it's all really low carb and simple and easy, which you guys, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a long time, you guys already know that I love easy and quick. That's just how I cook. Um, so thank you so much, Erica, again, for gifting me that cookbook. I will cherish it, and I already love the recipes that I've made with it. Their ideas are keto, they're low carb, and I guarantee your whole family will love it. So let's get into the video. All right, you guys, tonight for supper, we are going to be having steaks with some stuffed mushrooms. So I'm just gonna prepare the steaks first. I'm gonna let them marinate for about an hour. And then in that meantime, we will get the mushrooms prepared as well too. So these are just some steaks that I took out of the freezer that I had bought in previously. Like you guys know, I am still working on my freezer and pantry challenge. Doing really good. It's so rewarding and so gratifying to see things like cleared out of my freezer and my pantry. I absolutely love it. So these are just some strip loin steaks. I got three of them. So I'm just gonna prepare the marinade in this small dish. And I don't really follow a recipe for the marinade. This is what I've been doing for a while now for our steaks and everybody really likes it. So I just keep on making it how I make it. I don't measure anything, sorry you guys, but these are just all the ingredients. So maybe you can just use it yourself too. It's all keto friendly. I use some olive oil. And then I used some soy sauce. And I used some Worcestershire sauce.
And for the seasonings, I just use some Montreal steak spice. I love this stuff on steaks. Really, really good. And then some black pepper. And some pink Himalayan salt. And this is the garlic that I use. It's just a stir in paste. All right, that is all mixed together. So I'm going to put these steaks in a Ziploc baggie. And then I'm going to pour the sauce in the baggie and I'm gonna leave it for about an hour. For this recipe I'm going to have to make the sausage and cheddar dip. This is a recipe from Erica's Time to Shrink cookbook. It's actually an e-book that you get online. Highly recommend it. It has wonderful, wonderful recipes. So that is what I'm going to be making in today's supper with the stuffed mushrooms. So for, I'm going to half the recipe actually because I only have half of the amount of mushrooms and to be honest, Jimmy usually doesn't eat stuffed mushrooms. Do you like stuffed mushrooms, Jimmy? No. No, didn't think so. So I'm gonna half that recipe, so let's get started. All right, for this recipe, we need to start with the sausage and cheddar dip. That is what you will be stuffing the mushrooms with. So I actually halved this recipe um, because I only had half the amount of mushrooms. So I just had some ground venison. I didn't have ground sausage for this recipe, but I thought the venison would be just as good. So I fried that up and then I am adding some cream cheese to this. Then I will add some shredded cheese as well too, as well as some seasonings. And we will mix that all together. And what you'll need to do is bake this. So I just got out a pie dish and I put it in there and I baked it in that. And you also top it with some bacon and cheese, of course. So while that's baking in the oven, we are going to get started on the mixture that you will mix with all of that, the um, cheddar dip. So I'm just going to start by slicing up my mushroom stems. I had 15 uh, larger size mushrooms, so these are the stems out of that, and I just chopped those up really fine. I left out the jalapenos. This recipe did call for jalapenos, but I didn't want it too, too spicy, so I just left those out. Then we will move over to the stove and I put a little bit of oil in that frying pan where I had cooked the venison and I'm just going to fry up the stems in that. So that is all done and the mixture from the oven was almost all done as well too. So we are going to combine that all together. And I just used it in, I combined all of it in the frying pan just so it would be easier. I could mix it a little bit better. So you put that in with your stemmed fried mushrooms. Then you will add um, some of the bread crumbs um, Erica has this recipe as well in her cookbook uh, so I just added that in with that mixture and then I also um, will get all of the mushrooms prepped and ready for this mixture to go into the mushrooms. All right, so there's our mushrooms and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fill 
all of those mushrooms with that mixture that we just made and I made like I said I think there's 15 here and that was a good amount I had actually even leftovers that I put with aside for my meals for the rest of the week And there they are out of the oven. You topped it with some chopped bacon and these were absolutely delicious. They were so good. Highly recommend you guys jump on Erica's cookbook. Reasonably priced and absolutely delicious. Next, we're going to get started on our steak. Um, like I said, I marinated this for about an hour and I ended up just pan frying them because it is winter here in Canada. I usually prefer to use the barbecue to be honest but the pan fry was just as good actually Jimmy said he preferred the pan fried steak rather than the grilled but this was also just really really good and easy I just put some oil in a pan olive oil and I ended up frying them for about five minutes on each side and then when it was all done I did let it rest for about five to seven minutes as well too I didn't add anything else with the steaks as you guys seen in the previous clip with my marinade. That was enough for uh, flavoring for the steaks and they turned out really, really good. All right, and we are ready to plate up our dinner. Those are the two steaks that we're having and they turned out amazing we like our steaks um, medium medium rare so I did use a meat thermometer to check those I highly recommend using a meat thermometer I use it for all of my meat my chicken everything um, I put some of the stuffed mushrooms on the side for myself Jimmy unfortunately doesn't like stuffed mushrooms so it was just myself that had the stuffed mushrooms he wanted fries with his steak, so I made him some fries, just some frozen fries in the oven. And he didn't want salad as well, so he's kind of like a meat and potatoes guy. So I did have a side salad as well with my steak and stuffed mushrooms. And I ended up just having a little bit and I topped it with some ranch dressing. That is my favorite dressing of choice. It's high in fat, low in carbs, so that's always my go-to and it was really really good and filling dinner and very easy as well too those stuffed mushrooms took no time at all to make so there you have it there is jimmy's his fries and steak and there is mine it was absolutely delicious all right everyone today is tuesday and tonight for supper i am making clubhouse sandwiches for the family and i am going to make a cheese wrap a clubhouse cheese wrap so watch how I make it gonna be a simple and easy supper for tonight all right so the family's uh, clubhouse we're just gonna keep it simple I made a roast chicken last night and I'm just gonna use some of that that I had left over to put in there and some ham and some bacon I put mayo on their sandwiches toasted it there's that Second layer, I'm gonna put the um, bacon and some of the ham. So since I worked today, I just thought that I would keep it like a really simple supper, something that was quick. And everybody always likes this. So it's just gonna be a sandwich with a side of carrots. That is going to be it for them and I will show you guys how I'm going to make mine. Alright, these are the cheese wraps that I get from Costco has them. So I usually use two of these wraps just to make it a little bit more um, like not so flexible so that it's going to like stay. Um, because I think using one like they're pretty thin so I always use two. All right, so there we go. Let me look on the macros here. If you guys haven't tried these yet, these are really, really good. I absolutely love them. You get 10 wraps in a package, and the macros are on the back here. For one wrap, it's seven fat, 
one carb with one fiber, making them zero net carbs and 13 grams of protein. And that's for one. So I, like I said, I usually use two and they are so good. I get them all the time at Costco. They're one of my favorites. So what I do is I usually put mayo on the whole entire thing. And I use the Hellman's. Um, you guys can use any sort of mayo that you have, that you use. I make the one slit down the middle. Not down the middle, but down like a quarter of it. You guys can see what I did there. And then I just use the four corners and I put my ham, my chicken, bacon, and some cheese. So I usually put the cheese on the last one. Um, I'll put the ham on the first one because it's kind of like a little bit easier to flip because if you guys have seen this on TikTok, that's exactly what you do. You're just flipping it over and over and then over once again. So, so there's the ham. Then I'm gonna put what I have left for my bacon here. There we go. Just kind of spread that out a little bit. And then I'll put some of my chicken. Like I said, if you guys make a roast chicken, make sure that you take everything off of that chicken and reuse it. You can kind of plan out your meals, maybe even throughout the rest of the week for a couple days. Um, that's what I did with this anyways. I kind of had it planned out that I would be making clubhouses the next day after I made that roast chicken. Or even like chicken salad. And then I put a little bit more cheese. I know it's kind of a cheese wrap already, but I do put a little bit more cheese as well too. There we go. And that is it, you guys. So then you just fold it. Fold the one corner. Then you fold it over again. And then one more time. And there you have it. And it's so good, you guys. It's absolutely delicious. I've grilled this in my panini press, but the whole thing is, is you can't grill it very long because this cheese does melt really, really fast. So if you did want to put it in a grill, you can, but like I said, just don't leave it very long. It's really, really good when it's warmed up, but eating it like this is really, really good too. And you can even take that as your lunch as well too. So that is going to be my supper tonight. And I'm gonna have some pork rinds with a little bit of dip on the side. I will show you guys the final plating when I'm all done. One sec. All right, so I'm going to have, of course, the wrap that I made, and then I'm going to use some of this uh, artichoke and Asiago dip. This is one of my favorite dips that I have. It goes with a lot of things. I have it with my pork rinds. I have it with my grilled veggies when I make them. I have it with chicken. It's really good. And the macros on it, are for two tablespoons is 15 fat and one carb and one fiber making it zero net carbs and then one gram of protein so really good macro so I'm just gonna put that in a little dish on the side and then I'm also going to have some pork rinds these are the ones that I get here in Canada. Um, they're they're pretty good. I've never tried the Costco ones because to be honest, that's a really big container for me to get and I'm the only one that eats them. But these ones are pretty good macros. For nine pieces, they have six grams of fat, one carb and seven protein. So that's the amount I usually have. Um, I usually don't measure it, I'll be honest. I don't measure how many I have. But um, I just have a few just to kind of get that crunch. And it's always like a good side as well too, right? Easy supper that I made for myself and easy supper for the rest of the family. Like I said, I worked today. I got done at 5.30, so I wanted something that was kind of like quick and simple. And this is so good and so filling. And yeah, you guys have to get on the cheese wraps if, you, if your Costco has them. Really, really good. All right, everyone. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning. It's a little after 11 o'clock and we are going to make our supper because I am working tonight from 3 till 8.30 tonight. So I am going to make my supper to take with me 
Jimmy isn't feeling well and I'm just gonna make my supper and include it here with this what's for dinner because it is what's for dinner even though it's just really simple. I'm gonna make a burger chaffle. You guys have seen me make it before and that's what I'm gonna make for supper. So let's get started. All right, these are the burgers that I get. These are the thick and juicy sirloin burgers. Make sure you're looking for sirloin burgers. Like I mentioned before, um, a lot of burgers contain a carb count, which means they have fillers. So these ones for one burger is 25 fat, zero carbs, and where's the protein? 24 grams of protein for one burger. And all that's in the ingredients is beef, water, salt, and flavor and spices. That's what you want, something that actually has beef in it and not a lot of fillers, you guys. You guys can like make your own as well too. I don't make very good homemade burgers, so hence why I buy these ones, and it's just quick and easy. So there's four left in here, so I am going to actually cook all four. Um, I'm gonna get, I don't have any burger buns right now, but I am going to get um, a few burger buns so that the family can have it maybe tomorrow. All right, so these ones I usually just like in the summertime, I will put them on the barbecue, but obviously it's winter here in Canada. So I am going to be making them just on the stove top. So I just put them in um, a like nothing pan. I don't put any oil in it or anything like that. And these ones you can cook straight from frozen. So let me get the package open here. And these ones are nice and like thick and they keep their shape as well too. Um, it doesn't even say, these are five ounce burgers. I thought it was actually more than that to be honest because they seem to keep like, they're pretty, pretty thick. So we will just put those in a pan and just cook all four of them. I'm gonna cook them on like a medium heat and it just says to cook on both sides for um, six or seven minutes each side. So let's do that. All right, you guys, the burgers are done. I added a few slices of bacon because I wanted to have bacon on my burger chocolate today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna keep one of these burgers aside and one of the bacon aside. And then in the other container that I have here, I'm just gonna put the burgers that I made as well because we can have those maybe um, tomorrow for lunch or something. I just rather cook them all at one time um, just because it's easier, right? If you're cooking one, you might as well cook a lot. So, and I'll just put the bacon in there with it as well too and then I'll let that cool and close it up. This is going to be for today's though. So let's get started on the chaffle, you guys. All right, you guys have seen me make a chaffle before. I always have to look at my recipe though. Okay. We are going to plug the chaffle in and let that heat up. And then we're just gonna put all of our um, ingredients just in a bowl and mix it up. So it's a half a cup of the mozzarella cheese. I always use a mixture of cheese. That's usually what I always have on hand. And I use coconut flour. So it's two teaspoons of the coconut flour, which I have a half of a teaspoon serving here. So I'm gonna do four of these. And this is one of the better recipes that I found for chaffles. Um, you guys can do your research. There's a lot of recipes out there actually for chaffles, but this one I've found like is the best. And one egg. This one may be a double yolk, you guys. This is from our um, chickens. And sometimes the one lays double yolks. Oh no, it's just one big yolk, nice. Perfect. And then we're also going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder in there. So there's that. And also what I do, depending on what kind of chaffle I'm making. So in this case, I am making a savory chaffle. So I am going to put some of the everything but the bagel seasoning on it as well too. So I'm going to put that in there as well. And then we're just going to mix that all together. You guys little bit of cheese on the top and the bottom of my chaffle. So I will show you here. This is all ready to go. Let's get the cheese. All right, so in your chaffle maker, you're gonna put a little bit of the shredded cheese on the bottom. And you're gonna put half your mixture after it's mixed really, really well, you guys. We're gonna put a little bit of cheese on the top as well. 
This will make it nice and crispy on both sides. And then I leave mine for four minutes. All right, you guys, it has been about four minutes. And the key is don't lift this up for like three or four minutes or else it will stick because it's not going to be done yet. So this looks pretty done. So see how it gets a little bit crispy? That's what you want. And as you can see, mine leaked a little bit. That's why it's always good to have something underneath your dash as well too, just so that if it does overflow, you can kind of wipe it off. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the other one. This will be the rest of our mixture. Put a little bit of cheese to make it crispy. Here we go, and cook it for four minutes. All right, that is almost done, you guys, but let's start assembling our burger. I am going to put some Hellman's mayonnaise on there. There's our mayo. I'm going to put some of the bacon. I sliced up that one slice of bacon. Turn our chaffle, because this should be done. Yes, so we're going to unplug our chaffle. And you guys can add whatever toppings you want, like whatever you have on your burger. Um, I don't add any cheese because I always feel like there's enough cheese definitely in the chaffle. But you guys can add cheese or a dill pickle or some sauteed mushrooms or whatever you would like. Then we're just going to put that one on top and voila you guys. This is why you put a piper towel on the bottom. I had to take it off a couple times but there we go. So we just let that cool. I usually leave it open. I'll throw away the paper towel and such. But this is what I'm gonna have for supper, you guys. All right, so this burger chaffle is going to be for my supper tonight. I work three o'clock, actually, no, I work two o'clock until 8.30, sorry, you guys. And then I had made some of these previously, you would have seen in um, this video. These are the stuffed mushrooms from Erica's cookbook. They're really, really good, so I would thought I would take some as well to have on the side. And then I am also having a two of these Built Bar Bites. And these ones are the white chocolate cherry sundae ones. These are my favorite. I'm all out of the bars, but I did order um, one box of the minis. So I'm taking two of those. And that is going to be what's for dinner tonight, you guys. All right. Good morning, you guys. It is Friday morning, actually. We are to the end of the week. Finally, I work today at 2 o'clock. I am all bundled up today because it is cold out. I think it's minus 20 i believe so i think that's like minus two or minus three fahrenheit for everybody in the u.s here in canada it's minus 20 with the wind chill it is colder it's going to be cold all weekend here it snowed a little bit i think it stopped snowing oh no it's still snowing actually but i'm just going to go and give the chickens some um scrambled eggs i know but they love scrambled eggs it's really good for them look at these gals they are ready for me to give them some treats today Aren't you? Aren't you? Hi, Yoke. Hey, Sunshine, I got some treats for you guys. All right, you guys, I had a shower after I was done feeding the chickens and I'm just getting my lunch ready because I do work two till 8.30 today. So I'm taking my lunch with me. Um, I'll probably take an energy drink actually to drink on the way there. I'm gonna grab one. I'm gonna take the Sour Heads one today. I have like kind of a mixture in the fridge right now. I have this one, I have the birthday cake, which I've really been liking, and then my favorite all time of all the bangs is this one here, the Blue Raz. This is my fav favorite one, I love that one. Um, but I do like the birthday cake too. It's kind of a toss up 50-50, so. But I like to have those on hand. Um, I, I know energy drinks, are, energy drinks aren't good for you, but I don't have very much caffeine throughout the day. I have my one coffee in the morning, um, and then I usually will have an energy drink if I'm working like that night or if I have stuff to do because I'm old. <laughs> I'm 44 and I get tired once like eight o'clock comes around. So in order for me to kind of get through the day, especially working a night shift and I don't get home until after nine, 9.30, I need that extra caffeine to kind of push me through. So that's why I keep Bang Energy Drinks on hand as well too. So let's see what I got here. I will show you guys what I'm taking for my supper tonight, okay? My supper is usually around like five o'clock when I do work this shift. So let me show you what I got. All right, so you guys seen in my last vlog um, all the sausage that we had made. 
And we had kept a little bit um, for ourselves because we wanted to try it out because this is what we want to do next year. Maybe with like a whole deer or a whole elk is we want to make sausage out of all of it. But I had some last night, so I didn't show you guys. Um, last night was Thursday. I never showed you guys my supper, but it's literally the exact same thing that I'm having for supper today on Friday. So I had some of the elk sausage, which tasted absolutely amazing. Jimmy did such a good job on everything, like the amount of spice and fat content because he mixed a couple of the natural fat. And then I had a chicken Caesar salad last night as well too. So let me show you guys that. There it is. I used up the last of the roast chicken that I um, cooked up on, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. And this is the last of it, so that's done. I'm so glad we used that because I hate wasting meat. And this is my ranch dressing as well, too, that I will take with me and have. The thing that I'm going to have, I almost forgot here, you guys. Let me open this up. Is I'm going to have some of those leftover um, stuffed mushrooms. And like I said, it's Erica's recipe. They're so so good i've been having them almost like as a side with every meal this week so that is going to be my lunch you guys i am going to be leaving here fairly shortly that is going to be end of the friday's video anyways um i just have i work tonight so i won't be i won't be vlogging again um but i will i do want to make one more recipe you guys so i will make that one more recipe and and you guys will see what i have for dinner good morning everyone it is saturday and I'm about to make one of the last recipes from Erica's cookbook. I'm going to make the bacon cheeseburger casserole. Sounds delicious. Um, so I'm going to get started on that, you guys. And I think I'm going to pair it with a coleslaw. So you will see how I make my coleslaw as well. So let's get started. First, we are going to uh, fry up the burger. So you guys know that we're hunters and this is elk actually elk burger so I'm just going to fry this up and then drain it and then we will add the rest of our stuff that goes into this recipe while this is starting to cook I'm actually going to preset my oven to 350 as well all right in that same pan um, I'm just draining the burger off of there in that same pan I'm going to fry up some bacon I'm going to do about four slices. We need a half a cup of chopped bacon. So I'm thinking this will, actually maybe I'll do five. If I have leftover, that's fine. I always like keeping um, cooked bacon in the fridge anyways. So let's do five slices. And we will just let those cook. There's our ground beef. I put it back actually in the same pan that I just cooked the bacon just to get some of um, the flavorings as well too. Now I'm going to cut up my bacon and I just looked at the recipe and this actually calls for two pounds of hamburger um, in a nine by 13 pan. So I'm actually going to kind of half the recipe, a little bit more than half. I have this pan here, which I'm going to put parchment paper on, but I would say, I'm not sure what size of this is to be honest, but it's probably, it's a little bit bigger than a nine by nine, I would say, but um, yeah, we're just going to do that. But this is a very easy recipe, you guys. I've been figuring out. So easy. Um, and you know me, I like easy recipes. So thank you, Erica, for making this very easy recipe in your cookbook. Um, I absolutely love your cookbook. There's a list of things that I want to make. And I like them because they're not, they're simple. Um, they're simple ingredients that you'll have on hand. And it's also like, basic right so it's not this big elaborate cookbook that you need you know a gazillion things first of all for ingredients and that it takes up a lot of time because honestly I I don't have time for that I'll be honest I'm gonna add a little bit more bacon because since we made so much and I love bacon anyways so all right then we need a boat it calls for three quarters of a cup of cheese which um i think i'm going to use the full amount of cheese because i do like my things pretty cheesy i like lots of cheese and lots of bacon um that's why keto was perfect for me <laughs> all right so we're going to dump that in then we're going to mix this all up so you guys three three ingredients so far how easy is that all right i just put parchment paper because i feel like it's going to be easier to clean 
I don't have a glass one. My glass one is actually being used right now. I made a cauliflower bake, so um, this will have to do. I need a half a cup. I'm gonna use the same amount, I think, for this as well, too. Um, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, three eggs, and I stuck, actually, you know what? I stuck to mainly the recipe, except for probably the quantity of the beef. Um, well, elk in our case, but um, I think I used maybe a little bit over a pound. It called, the recipe calls for two pounds, but all the other ingredients I actually pretty much kept the same. Now we're just going to mix that with a fork. And you know what, I give props to anybody who makes a cookbook. Like, there's only a few things that I probably like made from scratch that I thought was kind of like a good idea to kind of mix all together, but <laughs> I don't even remember it for the next time that I make it, let alone to make a cookbook out of the things that I've made, right? So I commend you, Erica, for doing this. That's awesome for you. They also, I also wanted to mention you guys, they have... Um, like a low carb keto um alcoholic drink cookbook i guess if you want to call it that um and that looks really really good i think i'm going to be buying that next especially for um summertime Ooh, that would be really really good so all right so there we go you guys that is it um the recipe calls for a little bit of bacon on the top but i think i've added enough bacon but i am going to put a little bit of of cheese as well too because I think cheese will just make it all kind of come together. Now we're going to bake it at, actually, it also calls, it says optional, top with a third of a cup of the low carb bread crumbs. And I have some of those in the fridge actually from a previous recipe that I made. So I'm going to actually put a little bit on top to use up the rest of this that I have. And it's, this is all in the recipe book. She actually has um, a bread crumb recipe as well too that is in the cookbook. Like all of these little recipes that are in there are just so handy to have. And it's all so good and so easy. And it's things that you guys will have on hand as well too, right? So, all right, so now we are going to bake it at a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes or until bubbly and the eggs are set. Like, all right, while that is cooking, I'm actually going to just make some coleslaw. This is the coleslaw that I get. Um, you can make your own as well too. This is per one cup is four carbs and two fiber, which is pretty good. So I usually mix all my ingredients in a bowl first and then I just add the coleslaw to that while it's um, all well mixed. So I don't have a recipe that I follow for this. Um, I just kind of made my own and everybody really seems to enjoy it. So I just start with some mayo. I just put a few scoops of mayo in there. And then I put a little bit of mustard. Put a little bit of heavy cream in there, not too, too. Salt and pepper. And then I also put a dash of the apple cider vinegar. There we go. And I also put a little bit of the white vinegar. There we go. Mix that up and we will give it a little taste. See how it is. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. So now we'll just add in our coleslaw. Mmm, that's so good, you guys. So easy side that you guys and your family can enjoy. My whole family actually loves coleslaw, so this is always a this is always a big crowd pleaser and easy. So we'll just set that aside for now. Actually, I'll maybe even put it in the fridge for now and let those everything marinate kind of into the the coleslaw mix. And then we will see how our cheeseburger casserole turned out. All right, this has been in there for about 20, I would say 25 minutes or so. 
And I think it's done. It looks like the egg is all set and everything is bubbly. And oh man, that looks delicious. So we're gonna let that cool and then we will plate it up. Take a closer look at it. It looks like everything is done and everything is set. It looks absolutely delicious. And this is a bacon cheeseburger casserole, you guys. All right, you guys, let's serve this up. I got this cute little spoon from, I think it's Pampered Chef. How cute is that? It's for like brownies and stuff, but I'm gonna use it today for this because I think it's gonna be perfect. So um, for her recipe, she says it makes eight servings. And this obviously is not a nine by 13 pan. Um, it's a little bit smaller. I would say it's, I don't even know, I don't even wanna guess. But I think I'm gonna have, for my serving, I'm gonna have one and a half, and it's this is very low in carbs, you guys. I think it's one net carb per serving. So actually, you know, I'm gonna have two. Yeah. That's the nice thing about when items are low in carbs, you guys, then you can have more. All right, so that is going to be the cheeseburger casserole. Um, I'm gonna have a half a cup of my col coleslaw that I made. This is really low in carbs as well too. I would say even with the mayonnaise and stuff like that, it still probably just works out to what the coleslaw actually is. So I'm going to have that. Here we go, perfect. And that is for supper tonight, you guys. It is Saturday. So that is what's going to be for supper tonight. So easy, I love how easy it was. Both of these items actually that I made were super, super easy and it looks absolutely delicious. All right, let's taste it. Oh my God, you guys, that is so good. Really, really good. I think what I would do on mine is I would kind of make it more of like a burger and I would add some like sugar-free ketchup and some pickles. I think that would be really, really good, but it is so good, you guys, I love it. And you guys already know the coleslaw is delicious. Look at that. Mm, 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 mm. And this combination actually goes really, really well together. It tastes so good. So that's a perfect meal. Low in carbs, keto friendly, and easy. I love all three of those. All right, everyone, that's the end of the video. Once again, thank you so much, Erica, from Time to Shrink. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for reaching out um, from the bottom of my heart. I love you so much. Make sure in the comments that you tell her that Janet Greta sent you from my channel, you guys. I would love for you to head on over to like and subscribe to her page. All right, you guys, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content. Make sure you hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video for YouTube. And thanks for watching, you guys.